All right, y'all. We are tuning in to another episode of Black Barber's Doc Podcast. We got Atheon Crockett to my left. How you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm good. All right. I've seen four shows with Danny Rag here, and um, y'all funny. Come on, man. Y'all funny, yo. We, that's how we do it. Y'all funny as hell. Like, I didn't know we was going to be sitting side by side. I thought you was going to ask me questions from over there. So I'm just, no, pause. I'm just, it's cool. <laughs> no, it's cool. I'm just playing. <laughs> it's cool. So... So what's 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 going on, man? Like why 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 a tour? Like um, you know, last time we met was in the pandemic in ATL. I think it was right. 2022. We out now. So yeah. Where, where are we going? What's what's been your favorite city so far? We at the Raleigh Improv, by the way, everybody. Yeah, this is um these, these are like um uh what do you call them? Spot dates, more so like okay. you know the clubs, they they book out their calendar every year. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so. Typically, they bring us back every year. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've yet to do an official Atheon tour. You know what I mean? Like how you see Kevin Hart will have a tour where uh -huh. he's in arenas and, and you know doing something crazy yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done any of those yet. I'm still building my stand-up brand. Um, I've done a lot with stand-up. I've done specials. I've produced specials for other people. Yep. Um, but as far as touring specifically, I'm, I'm you know still rocking out with these club dates. And um, yeah, it's always great to come back home to Raleigh. Um, it's close to the crib, Fayetteville. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I, I, I love seeing you stand up, man. I always seeing you on social media and things like that. So here we are. It's good to see you in person. Um, so tell me about a, a hip hop story, the movie. It's the, the love letter to hip hop, man. It's a comedic telling of the story of how hip hop was created. And then we shine a light on different iconic groups throughout the, yeah. the, the decades, different eras. Yeah. Um, and just shine a light on how hip hop was created in a real positive kind of a light. And then we come to present day hip hop and just see how much it's, it's changed yeah. and how it's kind of on some bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, is it something that can be saved? Can it be salvaged? So it's really more so about that. Man, so I see that you play like, uh, you self financed it yourself. Yep, um, financed it myself. With these, it. with these stand up tour dates, I financed it with that money. Wow. Yeah. So you're making it that. See, that's yeah, the. Yeah. So you got to reinvest in yourself. Like most people will, will yeah. get a bag of money and go buy a bullshit like a car, yeah. jewelry, uh, fly <laughs> bitches out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nah. True. I invested in movies, man. I don't. I don't. Uh, if you see me wearing jewelry, that shit is some silver that I bought in the mall, <laughs> in the in the center of the mall. Like I don't. I put my money was, in. How much was it? How much was what? The, the jewelry that you bought. Oh, I mean, anywhere from twelve dollars to eighteen dollars. <laughs> Nothing over twenty. Okay, okay. <laughs> if you if you pay more than twenty dollars for some jewelry, you right. you right. need your ass whooped. Right, right. <laughs> the shit has no value. But that's a, right. that's another conversation. <laughs> Got you. So so you self financed it, man. I know uh, about self financing. Uh, I finance self financed my barbershop film, um, which I've told you about too as well. What was the hardest part about? doing that and playing all those characters and getting like Cedric the Entertainer and a bunch of other characters involved to see your vision to catapult this into <laughs> honestly man the hardest part is uh the clerical work the paperwork mm -hmm. um dealing with the unions and and making sure your your film is up to code with them that's a headache yeah. a fucking headache right. um but you know at the end of the day it's it's part of the game. It's part of what you got to do yeah. to get your film made. Yeah. And so you know that the creative part was easy. Mm. That was fun. You know what I'm saying? It's it's all the other stuff that you have to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then trying to find distribution. Like it's it's a different market now. It's a different game. And um you know you have to find creative ways. That's why it's on a hiphopstory.com right now. Mm -hmm. Because we couldn't find a distributor that we really wanted to to rock with. And um. We still may do some other stuff with a streamer, but right now, um, instead of waiting around on that, I, I just go right to the people and get as much money as I can from it. Basically, sell it out to Trump and then make the label come to you. So that's that's some good advice for me, for my film as well, because it's been sitting for a while, but I've got the podcast going and pushing it and things like that. And it's like I said, it's won an award and stuff. So I, I like the way that we kind of got that synergy going with pushing it ourselves i mean i feel like that's the new way of doing things i mean it's really the only way to do it mm -hmm. um if you're not um you know one of the top two percent um people in like the industry yeah and when i say top two percent i mean names that you know right away yeah 
like a Denzel Washington. Right. You know what I mean? Like a, a Michael B. Jordan now, some of the younger ones too. But if you're not one of those names that can just walk into a studio and get something greenlit, mm -hmm. you're doing it yourself. Right. Meaning you have your social media following because that's what they all bank on now. Well, how many, how many followers does he have? Right, right, right. How many... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How many, what is his engagement like? Yeah. What are his analytics? You know what true, I'm saying? True, true. People want to, the, the, the studios and, the, and the, the check writers want to know that more so than anything. Like I said, if you're not one of those top, one of those big names that could really make some shit happen. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're always going to be doing it yourself anyway. So why yeah. not just do it yourself? Anyway. And yeah. Then, then you can distribute it how you want to. Right. That's awesome. So you, you mentioned that, um, so on tour, um, on this tour or previous tour that you've done or been out and about traveling the world and so forth how do you manage to keep your your beard and stuff maintained do you have a barber in every, <laughs> every city and things like that or coconut oil nigga <laughs> shea butter is that what you're gonna do before the show <laughs> yeah yeah uh no real talk um oh, right. i'm i'm my own barber so okay i cut my own hair i trim my own beard and just yeah i rock out that way um yeah that's how i do it yeah have, have you ever um seen anybody with a messed up haircut and put it in one of your jokes Nah, not unless I'm on stage and I see it, and then I'll be like, what happened yeah, to you? Yeah. You should beat your barber's ass. So let me ask you this. Um, having a, having um, this comedian open up for you, Danny Rag, mm -hmm. that's that's a that's a superior, superior talent. How did you manage to get him and why Danny? To be well, Danny's from Fayetteville, and <laughs> Danny, when he first moved to L.A., I would show up to certain comedy clubs, and he would just run up on me. Hey, man, <laughs> I'm from Fayetteville. That's I know your sister. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would... You know, I'm kind of an introverted nigga when I'm out. So when niggas just run up on me, there's a little bit of Bruce Lee that comes out. And I'd be right. like, yeah, okay, little right. nigga. Like, All right, cool. Like he, the arm stays right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he gonna let you know that you, you got to see him. Right. And he kind of buffed. So, I, you know, I had to put a little more extra right. emphasis in, inside the, the forearm, right? Right. But, um, but yeah, nah, that's, that's my guy. And when I saw him actually perform, yeah. I was like, ah. I felt like an OG. I was like, oh, the kid's got something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was sitting back like a mob boy. Hey, the right. kid's got something there. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's in the hip hop story, playing three different characters. Uh, he, he's been on the road with me a few times. And um, yeah, I mean, look, when I see somebody with talent, I'm gonna always try to position them in a, in a, in a, in a, on a platform to win in some kind of a way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, whatever I can do to help that is what I'm gonna do. So what's one thing you want people to grasp from this tour besides just laughter? Like why? Like why did what? What is? What I'm mean? a man with a message. Yeah. So it's, it's not always about the laughs for me. It's mm. about making sure I leave some somebody with something to think about. That's perspective. About their life, their relationship, their relationship with God, their encouragement, their dreams. There's always got. There's always a message in everything I do. Even when I'm up there cussing and, and talking the most shit, there's some message that you can walk away with. So that's that's my style. So in a hip hop story, in one of the trailers that I saw, mm -hmm. you have a barbershop scene. Mm -hmm. Why barbershop scene? That's my homage to coming to America. Oh, okay. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's Eddie Murphy's the GOAT. Coming to America is one of my favorite movies of all time. So hip hop story is my coming to America. It's yeah. a hip hop version of coming to America. That's right. how I sold it out. Uh, that's how I sold it. That's how I marketed it. Mm. Um, so you know, even though we would never be able to come close to, and we didn't try to do what they did in that true, scene. True. We just wanted to set the scene in a barbershop yeah. and have the old heads who were played by Damian Wayans, Wayne Brady, and Lil Rel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. have them talking about music of the day. Yeah. Like back in, I think we set it in the 50s, 60s. Yeah, the music of the 60s, 50s or 60s. and. You know how we always be talking about who's the top five and is it Kendrick or Drake and is right. it this and that and we always beefing about who's better. That's what the, the barbershop scene was in, in a hip hop story gotcha, gotcha. was them arguing over blues versus soul music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, and right. and it's always young versus old. There's always ages Every when it comes to the us. music conversation. Yeah. So that's that's what that was. That's why we was in a barbershop. Wow, that is that is awesome, man. It's, um... I know we got a very short time. Is there anything else you want to say that's been on your mind? The hiphopstory.com. <laughs> hey, tune in. This wraps our episode with Atheon Crockett. Thank you so much for your time, man. My guy. I appreciate Good it. Good job. Yes, sir. It's nothing like the down home blue. <laughs> Who's next? Give him the number one. The number one? 
allow me to reintroduce myself. I'm one of the pioneers of hip hop. We would live in large. I come out the house and I choke everybody on the block. I will write lyrics, bro. If I try to hand you this pen. <laughs> hip hop for the live and well. Hip hop is dead. The game is trash right now. These whack MCs are brainwashing these kids. Everybody in the street doing this stupid doodle -doo dance. What is that? Meanwhile, we got lyricists who built this, working at Burger Joe's. Salt and Pepper's here. Salt, salt, salt. I love hip hop, but I hate rap. And they don't respect the OGs no more. Hey, get somebody taller to stock these Johns early. We got to bring real hip hop back. I'm in. In one ear and right out the other, OK? What are you doing here, bro? Hip hop needs you. Now you show up after all this time? We got some white women with some really fat asses waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> Hip hop, a bebop, a wobbity bamboo. Look at my shoes. That's why I became the pawn for us. Why I slit my mom's throat with a pair of scissors? Yeah, damn.